What's up guys, I'm back with another episode. This time we're going to take a look at modules in ES6. So I have webpackbin.com open here. And I first thought that we would set up a local environment with Babel and webpack. But it takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to use webpack bin instead. So when it first loads, you're going to see that there's a dialog that asks you what type of environment do you want to set up. Well, make sure you select ES2015. So once you do that, just give it some time to load up. Okay, so once it's done, you're going to see that we have index.html here, and we also have main.js. Now, in this case, we're really not interested in any HTML, so make sure you select show log instead. And then if you click on the square on the right side, it's basically going to go full size. Now, prior to ES6, you've probably seen the common.js uh, syntax. So common.js is very popular in environments like Node.js, but it's also been available in browsers with Browserify. Now let's say you want to export something from a file. The way you would do that is you would use module.exports and then you would assign that to an object and inside of that object you might have you know functions or variables. Now if you wanted to import that module you would basically do something like this. So let's say var module equals require and then basically you put the name of your module so it might be some kind of a library that you installed from npm or it could be a local uh, module or file so in that case there will be a relative path let's say module 1 or something like that and of course if you use ES6 you could use const. Now the one thing to keep in mind about this approach is that it's actually synchronous so imagine you have multiple imports of this sort so you have multiple require statements well every single statement is going to be executed synchronously or in a blocking fashion so it takes a little bit more time than for example AMD which is another approach to handling modules in JavaScript. So like I said, AMD is asynchronous and it's actually been specifically designed for browser environment as opposed to CommonJS, which is mostly used in Node.js on the back end. But the problem with AMD is that it's quite verbose and it's not easy to write. Now, the last option I'll mention is one that you might have seen is UMD, which is actually compatible with both AMD and CommonJS. But again, it's also extremely verbose to write. And the very last one that we're actually going to look at is ES6 Harmony. Now, ES6 basically introduces the new import and export syntax. So this syntax is already supported on modern browsers like Chrome, Safari, Mozilla, but the module loading itself is not, at least just not yet. So you would actually need an ES6 compiler such as Babel. And when it comes to Node.js, the syntax is also supported in Node.js with a version 8.5.0. And you could actually enable module loading if you use the experimental modules flag. But the other thing is that if you use that flag, the files that contain the imports and exports need to have an MJS extension, which a lot of people say stands for Michael Jackson script. Now, anyways, the import export syntax will be available by default from version 10.0 LTS release. And of course, you could always look it up. Node.js release table or something like that. They have a table on GitHub, which you could find. Yeah, right there. You could see that the version 10 is still pending and it's scheduled for October 2018. But right, so let's now look at some actual examples. And let's begin with named exports and imports. So I'm going to create a new file here. Let's call it utils.js. And in there, let's say we're going to have a constant of pi. It's going to be 314. Let's say we're also going to have a constant we're going to call it a sort, so it's going to be an arrow function, and we're going to accept a variable number of arguments, and then we're basically going to sort them. So we're going to apply the sort function. Now, if you don't pass any comparison function, and let's actually look at some of the syntax here, sort.js, you're going to find the function in the documentation here. So if you don't pass the comparison function, it's basically going to sort the elements of the array based on each character's Unicode code point value which basically means that it's going to apply an alphabetical sorting order. Now that's fine with characters, but in this case we're going to assume that we're dealing with numbers. So let's pass a function that's going to accept two arguments. And it's also going to be an error function. It's basically going to do A minus B. So that's basically going to sort the elements in ascending order. Okay. And so let's say we got the pi constant and then we got the sort constant, which is actually a function. So we wanted to export them. The way you would do that is you would just use the export keyword and you would pass pi and you would pass your sort function, okay? You could save that. Now in main.js, that's basically the entry point of the application. If you look at index.js, 
it basically imports the script. And of course, the project is going to bundle everything up with Webpack, and it's also going to transpile it using Babel. So we don't have to set up anything ourselves. It's already pre-configured out of the box. So back here, let's do import. And the way that you would import the two constants is you could do pi and uh, sort. And you got to be careful with this. Basically, the names that you choose have to match the names that basically you, you export inside of the utils module. And the spaces here are optional. I include them just for readability, but of course you could omit them. So back here, and then you need to use the relative path of utils, and the JS extension is optional. So we can already do console log by. Let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us 314. And let's also do console log sort. So I'm going to pass, let's say, 93710 minus 2 or something like that. Let's say that. And it gives us the following result. If you actually click on it, and you could see that all the elements were sorted in ascending order. Now, of course, you don't have to use the arrow functions. You could also export a normal function. So let's say we had sort reverse function, and it accepted a variable number of arguments as well. But instead of returning that type of result, we would return something very similar, but we would do instead b minus a. So that's going to sort the elements in reversed order or in descending order. And you could also export that function as well in the same way. And you don't have to put them all on one line. It's sort of shorter to do it that way, but you could also do, you could also export them separately. So let's say we could just put sort reverse. Okay, and we can now import that from the module. So let's do sort reverse, save that. Now we can do console log. Let's use the same set of numbers and let's just call sort reverse. Let's see what the result gives us. Here's what the first one looks like and here's what the second one looks like. So it's going to be all of the elements in descending order. Now back in utils, the other thing you could also do is you could export a constant. Let's say we have a constant e equals to 71. You could export it in one single line like so. And if you wanted to import it, let's also import it. And let's also console log that. So let's uh, see what the value is. The value is 2.71, so that's how you import it. Now, the same goes for functions, so you don't necessarily have to export them you know, somewhere at the end of the file. You could also export them inline, so we could do export function sort reversed, okay? We could also export the pi constant, and of course you could also export the sort function right there. And we don't need anything else here, so we could do that. And this still works, as you can see. We still get the values. Now let's also say we had another function here, let's say const, we're going to call it clone, and it's basically going to clone an object. The way we would do that is basically using following syntax, so I'm going to use the spread operator, it's basically going to extend all the object properties into this new object and it's going to return that object. And of course this is going to be a shallow clone function, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put export, let's do clone as clone shallow. So when you do that using the as keyword, that's basically going to create an alias for clone. So the variable is going to stay as clone inside of this scope, but when you export it, you would need to use the clone shallow name in order to import that uh, function from the module, okay? So back in main.js, let's remove all that other stuff. Let's just put um, import clone shallow from, let's do utils, and .js is optional, you could put it, but it's actually not necessary. And let's do console log clone shallow. And let's maybe pass some kind of an object here, name Alex, let's see what that gives us. Now if you actually minimize the log, you're gonna see that we get an error here. It basically complains about the spread operator syntax. Now the one thing you could do is you could go to configuration to the settings, just click on the gear icon. Make sure you select stage zero features. Now, of course, the spread operator is actually not a stage zero feature, but if you enable that, the syntax is going to be available. So once you save that, and uh, let's maximize the log output, you're gonna see the object right there. In fact, what we could do is, let's say we have constant, that's gonna be our object here. 
and uh, let's do a comparison here object equals and let's put the object in the clone shallow function and of course that's going to be false it's basically going to return a brand new object from this function so basically this is how you can use an alias for your named exports now of course back in here let's say you wanted to import clone shallow but let's say you also wanted to use a custom name for that you don't necessarily have to use the same name that the named export provides back in the module itself you could use a custom name so let's say we wanted to export that function but we wanted to call it as clone instead of clone shallow which is kind of silly in this example but still it's permissible so let's say we wanted to call it clone and I'm going to replace clone shallow with clone it's still going to work as you can see and of course the same thing goes for you know pretty much just any constant any function and you could basically apply the same syntax for you know just about anything that you export now the last thing I'm going to show you with named exports is you could also import the whole thing like the whole module using the star keyword so that's basically going to import everything that's being exported from the file so let's do import star or asterisk from let's do utils and let's do console log and of course if you use that syntax you would also need to use the as keyword and then let's call it utils so utils is basically going to contain all of the exports from here right so let's do console log utils.py that's going to give us the value of pi. If you do console log of utils e, of course that's going to be the value of e. And you could use the sort function, you could use the sort reverse, and you could also use the clone shallow function like that, right? All right, so I'm going to clear this up for now. So let's go back to utils. And let's next look at default imports and exports. Let's say we had a class of car here. And we had a constructor here. Let's say the constructor is going to accept the number of wheels. And we could do this dot wheels equals wheels. We could also have a getter. Let's say get wheels. It's going to be a function. And it's going to return this dot wheels. Now we could do export default car like so. So that's going to be a default export. And back in here, we could do import car from utils. Of course, it doesn't make sense to call it utils. Let's just keep it that way for now. And let's save it. Let's do console log new car. Let's do four, four wheels. That's going to return an object with wheels set to four, as you would expect. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about default exports is that you don't necessarily have to keep the same name. So you have a class that's called car in this case, but you don't have to keep the same name for the import. You could call it, let's say, truck. Right, maybe for the truck you have six wheels, right? Um, and of course you would need to replace car with truck, but that still is going to work because when it comes to default exports, you can use pretty much just any name when importing the default value from the module. Now there's also another syntax you could use. You could move the export default to the top and you could use this in the same line with the class. And this is still going to work. If you save it, you're going to get the same object as before. Now, when it comes to constants, you have to be a little bit careful. Let's say we had a constant of, let's say, person equals a new object. Let's name uh, Alex. And let's say you wanted to export default person. And back in main.js, let's do import person from utils. And let's do console log person. That's going to be the object, as you can see. And of course, this doesn't have to be a person. This could be foo, you could console log foo, and that's going to be the same object that you export. Okay, so the one thing to keep in mind with constants, like I said, is you can't have export default constant. So you could export the constant by itself, and that's going to be a valid syntax, right? You can save that. And then in here, you could do import person from utils, and then you could console log person. It could be foo if you use the alias like I showed you before, right? If you use as foo, that's going to use a custom name for the import. Or you could keep it as person in that case you have to use the same name in the console log, right? So that's going to work. But like I said, you can't have this as a default export. So this is just not going to work. It's not going to be recognized as you can see. So if you wanted to use a default export of a constant, you would have to use it on two separate lines like so export default person and then you could import person 
without the curly braces because this is a default import, right? Now for functions, let's say we had export default, some kind of a function here. With functions, you don't need to provide any, you know, any name for that function. So we could export an object, the name of Alex as before. So this is going to be a function and let's call it get person. Of course, as you can see, we basically just have an anonymous function here. And like before, you could use pretty much just any name for it. And if you call that, you're of course gonna get the object as you expect. Now let's say back in utils, we had several exports here. So of course we could combine them on a single line, but here basically I have three exports. We have a pi, we have a sort function, and we also have sort reversed function like before. The one thing we could do is we could also do export default. We'd export an object that basically contains all of those constants inside of it. So we could do pi, sort and sort reversed. And this syntax, like I talked before, this is basically a shorthand for object. So this is the same thing as saying pi colon pi, right? And the same thing goes for sort. If you don't specify those, it's still going to work because of the shorthand syntax. Typically, you don't need to put them just for clarity because the names are pretty much the same. So you could just separate them by commas like so. And this is going to be the default export. So the one thing we could do here, let's do import utils. This is going to be the default import, right? And let's also import sort from in there, right? Let's do from utils, like so. Let's do console log utils.py. Let's also do console log, let's do sort. I'm gonna pass, let's say, again, eight, uh, two, three, minus 10. We've got the results right there. So we've got the value of pi, and we also got a new array with the elements sorted in ascending order. Now we could also do it a little bit differently. So instead of doing the export default of an object, we could also do, let's say constant utils, and that's basically going to be the object containing all of those properties. So let's do pi, let's do sort, sort reversed. The other thing we could do is we could do export Let's do utils as default. And then we could also export all of the other things. So instead of, let's say, exporting them on a single line, you could also export them at the very end of the file. So let's do export pi, sort, and sort reversed. And this is still going to work. We get the exact same results. Now in this case, you export the utils constant as a default export. So in this case, you could still use a custom name here. It doesn't have to be utils, could be pretty much just any name. And for the other ones, they're still going to be named exports, so you have to use the same name. So if you were to ex uh, so if you were to import pi, for example, you would need to use the same name as you used in utils.js, so pi, like here, right? And the last thing I'll mention is, let's say in utils.js, we had some kind of a processing here. Let's, so let's say, constant pi equals 314. Let's say we did console log pi. If you simply wanted to import the code from this file from utils.js, but you didn't actually want to assign it to anything, you could still use the import keyword and then put utils like so. So this is basically going to execute all the code in utils.js, but it's not going to bind anything to any variable inside of main.js. It'll just basically run all the code in utils.js. And just one small thing I'll mention, if you look at export.js, let's go to the documentation here. This syntax right here could be useful if you're building a package, an NPM package. And let's say your package contains multiple other third-party libraries, and you wanted to export everything from a certain library. This is basically how you would do that. You would use the asterisk syntax, export everything from any library or any module. And typically that would just be a separate file. This, so this would basically import the contents of that file and export them from the current file. Of course, you could export you know, several things like functions, constant, classes, anything else pretty much. And this would be imported from a different module or library. And the same thing goes for aliases. And you can also assign aliases to those imports like so. This is not very common, but you might run into it. And so I just wanted to mention that. So this is pretty much it for modules. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.